Good afternoon, traders. Uh, this is Bob Haberkorn, Mike Sabo, and Frank Charlie coming to you from RGO Futures here in Chicago. Going to talk today about our outlook for 2013 in the commodity markets. Mike's specifically going to address the energy markets. Frank's here to talk about the grain markets, and I'll be talking about the gold and silver markets, the precious metal markets, and what we anticipate for the first quarter, as well as what we're looking at for the entire year uh, moving forward. A lot of uncertainty out there. A lot of questions being asked right now. Uh, how are commodities going to react in 2013? You know, we'll see how uh, what the thoughts are. Mike, for energies, what are you looking at right now in the energy markets? I mean, it's well, fiscal cliff. You know, yeah. First current. of all, I'd like to just kind of uh, talk a little bit about what we've seen here so far in, in 2012. Um, you know, currently we've got prices trading around about $90 a barrel, and you know we've seen lows uh, dipping just under $80 here, about 77 and change, and we've seen the highs get up to around $110 a barrel. Uh, you know, most of the year the general theme here has been. Uh, we've seen build in stockpiles. There really seems to be, and I know most people, you know, when they look at the, you know, the price of gas, uh, and that's how most people relate to oil, at least your general consumers, they would still argue that it's on the higher side. But in reality, we've really had uh, more of a, uh, a supply uh, a surplus. Uh, you look at the five-year average versus what we have on hand, we've been con pretty much continually running above 30 million barrels plus above the five-year average. Uh, look at the weekly inventory numbers. We've generally seen the theme has been a build and build and build. So we've really got a situation where, you know, the crude prices have been rather tame uh, and, and, and especially over the last couple of months uh, trading in this mid to upper 80 range. Um, there hasn't been a whole lot of excitement really in the oil market. So, you know, we, we've had some good ranges here for the year. There's certainly there's been some good trading opportunities, but we've got, you know, uh, I would say, you know, certainly adequate supplies at, at this time, uh, at least according to historical numbers. Now, moving forward here, you know, into the first quarter here, uh, yes, I mean, you just brought up fiscal cliff. I think that's, you know, no matter what market you're looking at, whether you're looking at, whether you're looking at commodities, whether you're looking at equities, whether you're looking at real estate, any type of speculative investment, I think you, you certainly got to be thinking about fiscal, in, uh, fiscal uh, cliff and the potential impact that, that this may have. Uh, as well as it could be affect your own job. Uh, so, you know, it's definitely, I think, weighing on the market, and I think that's one of the things that's helped keeping crude prices, you know, uh, in these levels, you know, as well as obviously the, the supply issue. Um, you know, my personal thoughts are what I believe is going to happen is that you've got such unwillingness on both parties' sides to really compromise. I think we're going to go over, and, and, uh, and I think you're going to see, you know, some certain impact here on the price of oil. Now, looking at first quarter outlook, uh, you know, prices I think are still going to be under pressure here as they're still, you know, coming together and getting things resolved. So I look for the market mostly to be uh, range bound for the most part. I think we're going to be in that $80 on the low side here up to maybe the 95 upper $90 uh, range here for the first quarter. But I got to tell you, I don't think that's going to continue for the entire year. Um, I realistically think we could see, you know, depending on how bad and how long this fiscal cliff uh, issue, you know, kind of lingers out there, um, you could see prices dipping down into the mid to lower 70s on the low side. But I think, you know, looking at 2013, where prices are probably going to head, I think on the upside, I think you're going to see prices push into the 120, 125 area. Except if we see, you know, uh, the U.S. actually become a little bit more active or, or you know, as a role as a, these conflicts are playing out in the Middle East. You know, we know we've got a civil war going on in Syria right now. You hear about it, it, it surfaces in the news, then it kind of goes to the back burner. But make no mistake, that's a, that, there, there's some serious problems going on over there. And if we see Israel start to move uh, and, and, and possibly do some airstrikes against Iran, I mean, you could see crude prices easily touching that 150 uh, you know, $150 a barrel area. So, you know, there are some serious wild cards in the market. Uh, and, and I think, you know, you know, looking at the price of oil right now and how it generally moves long term, uh, I am, you know, a bull on the market. I think, you know, energy prices, are, I think everyone can agree, will probably over time you're going to have ups and downs. But over, ter over time you're probably going to continue to see higher and higher energy prices. Um, but, you know, we see something like that develop, and you could see some pretty explosive moves. And the thing with that is, is that, and I think you guys would probably agree, at some point, something's going to happen there. 
I mean, you've got uh, Iran, you know, they are just bent on gaining, you know, nuclear uh, uh, powers here. So, you know, at some point, someone's going to make the decision there to either let them go full steam ahead with it or they're going to step in and they're going to intervene and they're going to they're going to stop that, you know, from occurring. And I think they're probably going to step in and stop that from occurring. And when that does happen or if that does happen, I think it's a matter of when, that's when prices are really going to have, uh, you know, we're going to see some explosive moves. I mean, if history has ever taught us anything, uh, you know, whenever we've seen serious conflict like that in the Middle East, uh, that would generally cause prices uh, uh, to spike. So, you know, I think you've got to certainly, you know, for the most part here, again, just kind of recap in there. First quarter, you know, uh, I think you're just going to kind of see this market kind of basically two-sided uh, action there for the most part. I think there's going to be enough volatility there, though, for traders to take advantage of. But, uh, you know, looking at the bigger projection, I think as we move into, you know, second and third quarters uh, of the year, um, I look to see those prices pushing into the 120, 125 area. I think that's what we could see uh, potential highs for next well, year. Well, we're trading at 90 right now in the 90 range, and it's the middle of, you know, we're getting into what, January in the wintertime. Uh, spring driving time comes around. There's no secret. Demand goes up. Be interested to see. And you can't discount the role of the Fed and central banks sure. and, you know, with what we're seeing with this seasonally high crude prices, yeah, despite the tensions in the Middle East, because there's always tensions. Yeah, there, there the is. There's always a little bit of premium built into the market there. And, and you know, and if we really continue to see or begin to, to, to see some real economic recovery here in our own country, um, you know, we should see the, the increase uh, spike in the demand uh, for oil. And, and we may see that. You know, I look at the numbers out there right now, and, of course, we all know that, uh, uh, you know, there's ways to massage numbers like unemployment numbers and things like that as people drop off the rolls where it looks like unemployment's improving, but really maybe it isn't improving. Um, you know, we'll watch. I think the housing, I think the big indicator to really watch is the housing market um, because, you know, that, that's, it, that's a little sluggish. But I think once you really start to see recovery there, I think that's what will give us really sustained you know, long-term uh, economic recovery. Um, so, you know, I'm kind of watching that as an indicator, and, and I think there's still a big shadow inventory out there of homes. But nonetheless, I think that's a, a key indicator to kind of watch. And if we see improvement there, and we see real economic improvement there, and we start to see the, the you know, you look at the five-year average of the, the crude stocks that we have on, on hand, and you start to see that come down compared to the five-year average, that should be very supportive for the price of oil as well. I, I think we're already starting to see some signs of uh, housing recovery. There is a little and bit. And that is um, truly where most people have their, their wealth and what they feel good about um, in terms of the economies improving and getting sure. better. And, um, yeah, geopolitics is always uh, that wild card um, Absolutely. when it comes to the, to the crude oil. But what about the fact that there is really a finite amount of crude in the world and we have some well, economies that are growing much faster than what we see here in the u.s china and india sure. in particular um they don't intend to ride bicycles forever no and, they don't and, and that's fact, where, you, you're right about that and that's where i you know i was pointing out is i mean long term i mean there's new normals i think in terms of prices yes yeah. i would agree and you that. don't seem to i mean crude fit you fill up your tank here in chicago it's around 330 for the basic uh 89 87 octane you know, and it doesn't seem to be cutting back. You know, people don't seem to be cutting back right now. No, They're just absorbing, adjusted. adjusted to the price. We, right. People well, adjust. they cut back at five. I mean, you thought people talked two years ago when crew was making those initial spikes that people would start cutting back on it. But it just doesn't seem to be the case. The market kind of has absorbed and uh, realized where we're at with sure, it. Sure, it's become the new norm. And, 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 I mean, you look at, right. like, when we, you talk about adjust. the grains, I mean, look at right. the price of corn and, and, and soybeans. Right. You know, I mean, you've got new new – new normal, if you will, exactly. in terms that's of true. prices, uh, gold and silver, you know, the metals. I mean, you look at all the commodities, and, and I think that's one thing that, you know, I mean, I talk a lot about the energies, obviously, because that's a topic I'm covering, but I think when you talk about commodities in general, uh, and, and you look at the cycles that we're in out there, I mean, you know, these almost across the board, most of these right. commodities have new normal uh, price points, if you will, you know. Right. Markets used to trade in certain ranges here. But there's no and inflation. Now there's and now no we're inflation. here. Um, right. So well, that's thanks to uh, as you pointed out. I, yeah, I know. I know. I'm obviously. joking. But the Fed, I mean, you know, that's one thing. You know, that I think, you know, as as a consumer, as a trader, as an investor, you got to think about. I mean, we continue to print as a country unlimited amount of money. 
I mean, they well, keep printing, and, and it, it's going to affect the price of commodities. I mean, you're yeah, going to get your ebbs and flows in, in, in your prices, but you can only continue to go down that path for so long before right. everything costs as, more money. As, as a country, we continue to uh, debase the U.S. dollar. All commodities are, are based on the dollar, and that's why we'll continue to see prices go higher. Well, what about with the grain well, markets? It yeah. seems to be a common theme. we got upside. I mean, corn, wheat, soybeans are running pretty high right now. Well, yeah, as you know, you know, a quick recap on, on 2012 was that we it had historical levels. Um, at least in the beans and the uh, corn. Uh, we did not see the same kind of uh, reaction in the wheat market, but we hit roughly 850 in the corn for, you know, two or three seconds, and it came back down. But we spent a, a lot of time um, hanging around that $8 level. Uh, soybeans got very close to $18. Yes, there was a lot of talk that, you know, we were going to see $10 corn and $20 beans. Yeah. And, in fact, you know, we, we may see that. We had... Um, the worst drought that we've seen in 50 years. And all indications right now for, you know, 2013 is that this drought will persist, maybe get worse. Yeah. So there are a lot of unknowns here, um, you know, as far as the economy, the fiscal cliff. Um, and obviously, you know, grain markets are very, very sensitive to weather, you know, and uh, that affects the supply. And then the economy is going to determine, you know, what the demand side is. Um, we have, for the first time ever, 40% of the corn crop going into uh, ethanol. And this is the, uh, the first time ever that we've seen greater demand for corn than feed usage. So, to me, you know, something's wrong when, you know, when we go uh, that far to keep um, green energy alive and renewable energy. I, I don't know that this is the best thing. Um, again, but that's more, you know, policy, and we're talking about, you know, just commodities and supply and demand, and, and I think that the grain markets are probably the best of all the commodities as far as supply and demand goes and, and meeting uh, the needs and adjusting price according to, to those needs. So um, we had a very uh, interesting uh, year, and I think that um, the tone for 2013 is probably going to be set in the first quarter of the year. In January, we have that big quarterly report that's going to give us a, a, a clearer picture on just how much uh, crop we have. And keep in mind, this is the second year that we've had not a good crop. We went from bad to worse, actually, from um, 2010 to 11, and then this uh, 2012 to 2013 uh, crop is uh, much smaller. And there was a lot of damage done by this drought. Um, so, you know, there were some early, very clear indications that we were headed for a drought and people chose to ignore it. I think that we're going into this next year with our eyes wide open, and that's why prices are still at yeah, historically stay, high up there levels. High, yeah. And that gets back to, <clears throat> hey, we, we do see a new normal, and people do adjust for the most part. But there are... Um, parts of the world that are not as fortunate as we are here, in spite of whatever our, our uh, uh, economy is going through right now. And, and poor people depend heavily on these types of grains yeah. for food. Yeah. So um, that becomes a problem that I think, um, you know, will be dealt with. But if we continue to see grain prices move higher, uh, meat prices move higher, it becomes more difficult for people to eat. Um, you know, it becomes a, a more serious problem. But I, I do think that moving ahead, we're going to have to get used to paying more at the pump, more at the grocery store, and um, inflation's coming. And then, you know, you, you're um, you're going to talk about metals, and I think inflation is, you know, well, something every, that's unavoidable. Yeah, everything that we're looking at it now, I mean, whether it be no the grains, around. the energies, the soft markets, the metals, um, you know, we do have some major inflationary factors right now going on in the world, worldwide, that are running the prices of commodities. And I don't see any reason why that won't continue into 2013, especially with the precious metals. Um, yeah. You know, you got two forces working right now, camps in the, in the gold and in the silver market, more so in the gold. You have the flight to safety uh, traders uh, that are out there that are buying, holding, uh, looking for the bullish move. Uh, you also have the people that are saying, well, the economy is getting better. There are numbers that are showing some signs 
of strength. And we have had some numbers that have come out that have been, you know, op renew optimism for 2013. With gold, uh, the biggest thing with that is you get both those two factors working, the optimist uh, trader that's buying on demand, and also you get the trader that's buying on safe haven buying. I think gold will continue for the 12th year in a row for some more upside. When you look at, too, central bank buying of gold has been higher in 2012 and 2011, 2010, 2009, 2008. It's been a lot more central bank buying going on around the world. Um, I think that will continue in 2013. Just with more unknown, uh, you know, worldwide geopolitical uh, situations right now. I mean, you have countries of the Chinese that they want to increase their gold supply. Um, you have the Russians that want to increase their gold supply, and uh, we're seeing a lot of smaller countries as well in South America that are also have been buying gold. On any of these dips that we've been seeing, I mean, we just had a dip down to 1640, which doesn't break the trend on it. If you look back from 2012, you go back. And you look at the gold chart, I mean, 18 is the top. We hit three tops at 18 and never could trade above there. It tested it. Um, and then on the low side, you go down to about 1530 on the low side. I mean, we're trading as of right now right around that 1660. So, but, you know, it's, it was a big sell-off the last two weeks. Um, but you get into the point now where I think seasonally you have to take into account at the end of the year gold's going to sell off it's done it the last three years in a row uh, whether it be people taking profits um, or rebalancing the books whatever it may be but it has presented an opportunity for the last three years because getting into the first quarter then precious metals gold and silver have traded higher for the last three years in a row going into the first first quarter and frank you touched on the first quarter will probably set the trend for 2013 i with the grains i think it'll be the case too with the metal markets i've been looking for in the first quarter just due to uncertainty here in the United States with the fiscal cliff, which it'll probably get resolved. You know, they'll come up with a plan probably within a week after the New Year's. You'll feel a little bit of pain, if at all. And they'll come up with a plan. They'll, they'll cut taxes. They'll raise them for a certain income bracket, cut them for everyone else. Uh, we'll see what they do with spending cuts. But my guess is we'll probably be another trillion in the hole next year at this time. Today we're at $16.4 in debt in the United States. We'll probably be at about 17.4 next year at this time. So kick the can down the road type uh, solution. I think what's going to come out of D.C., looking at like no parties want to agree on any solution to this matter. But uh, that in itself will linger on in the first quarter, and I will I do see being bullish for precious metals. Um, you know, gold, looking at it right now, that 18 level being a key level, I do look forward to probably breach that 18 level here at some point in the first quarter. Uh, a question people ask all the time, too, and I'm sure you guys hear a lot, is when's gold going to go to 2000? I mean, we saw in, was it in 2010, that old previous high was 19, I think it was 1928 it traded up right, to. Yeah. And I, with it seems like things are starting to come to a head. Uh, I do think we will breach that and see trading north of 2000 at some point this year, and that being the new norm in gold. Um, I mean, every year you hear people saying gold's a bubble, gold's a bubble. You know, it's, we're going on the 12th year now that this thing's moved. But, you know, if anything, I think things are starting to come to a head, and we will see more upside on this thing. What, what you real, real quick, along, along those lines, you're talking about a bubble in, in gold. How it behaves so much differently than other commodities is that, um, you know, the supply and demand, we're talking about grains, the price gets high enough and people stop buying it. Gold seems to be the opposite. The, yeah. the higher the price gets in gold, the more people want it. It's not the same well, it definitely raw attracts, commodity. It attracts you know, attention. Right. So, you know, you, you bust out your uh, your gold jewelry and start wearing those chains again because, you know, gold is in not gold. Me. But <laughs> gold, Frankie's to my point, though, uh, gold is that, that one commodity that, as it gets more expensive, demand seems to pick up. You want yeah. it more. Because well, the price and is it's, higher it's, I think instead it's, of you demand see, backing yeah, off. And I think it's something it that, actually picks up. that Bob totally. touched on, and that is this, is that gold and silver, precious metals in general, they, they, they're very unique in a sense that it does attract two completely different types of traders, but yet they're both looking for the prices to go up. Uh, you've got the, 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 the pessimist, if you will, the doomsdayers, if you will, that think yeah. the world is ending. And, and gold then will be you the can only make some, currency in the world you can make some strong day. arguments for things do look kind of ugly out yeah. there and money is being printed and history has taught us anything. Every paper currency, every fiat currency has failed at some point. So where do you want your money at? At a, 
handful of worthless uh, dollars or, or gold so or silver. So you've got that argument. Uh, then, then the other one would be the optimists, the people that say, hey, we are under, things are recovering, things are looking better, this, you know, the sun's getting brighter, you know, we can see the light at the end of the tunnel. And what that means is that, you know, to understand how money supply works, you, you sophisticated traders understand that, they're going to have to start raising rates to pull that excess money out. There's so much money out there that's going to be chasing everything and you can get true economic recovery. So they're probably going to first allow some you know, additional inflationary pressure to come in because they've got to make sure that this thing is really right. running smooth before they start pulling that excess money out of there. If they start pulling excess money out too early, we could, you know, we could make this last, you know, recession that we're still basically in, uh, you know, look like sure. the golden days, you know. So right. that's where you could get that real inflationary pressure and really gold prices could be spiking and taking off before they start pulling out that excess money. So, you know, unlike a lot of other commodities, that's the one, you know, the metals where you can it's really... It's got a couple things can, working exactly, in its favor for the it bulls. it attracts a lot of, you know, a lot of different individuals, but the thought processes are still looking for those, you know, prices to increase. Well, in silver, I mean, gold has that, but silver also, you know, being well, a precious metal, but uses. does have the industrial use where sure. you can kind of see, well, things get a little hairy that <clears throat> silver does sell off. But I think right now for silver to keep an eye on, what you got to watch right now is just right where it's trading here now at $30. Any dips below 29 you know, it does look like you, you know, you're going to see some strength coming in, anything below 29 bargain hunting. The top level I talked about on gold, you know, maybe looking for a move back about 2000 I think silver's probably got it in it to test that gold does, in fact, do what I think it will do. Uh, we we'll probably will have an upside move here, too, probably back into the 40 range. So, you know, it's uh, interesting what's going on. We're, you know, a lot of unknowns in the world. Uh, we're 2013's definitely coming in with a bang here with the debt ceiling uh, and the fiscal cliff coming up, and it'll be interesting to see how it plays out. It seems to be the consensus that 2013 probably will continue to move along the lines Come in the commodity world, uh, as bullish commodities, as did 2012, 2010, uh, 2011, 2009, going on back. I mean, we are in a commodity bull run right now. And, uh, you know, we'll see how it continues in the 2013. If anybody has any additional questions or would like to contact us to talk a little more about what we anticipate in 2013 and get down on some specifics on levels, uh, maybe some option strategies you can employ uh, for the, for, you know, going into the next year, please feel free to contact any of us. Uh, we'd be more than happy to assist you with that. Remember, futures trading does pose significant risk. It's not suitable for all investors. And have a happy new year. Let's see how 2013 moves along here.